Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome to a CGTN live stream. I am Hong Fei, and we're coming to you live inside the Hong Kong Palace Museum. And as you can see, we're the only one here. This is an exclusive tour, and I'm so excited uh, to, to, to explore this amazing exhibition with none other than the lead curator himself, Mr. Raphael Wong. Raphael, thanks, to, uh, hello, thanks hello. for taking your time. I know you're really busy. Um, thanks for inviting me. Say hello to our uh, social media fans. Hello, everyone. Oh. I'm Raphael Wong, associate curator and lead curator of this exhibition and the special exhibition, The Making of Masterpieces, Chinese Painting and Calligraphy from the Palace Museum. Amazing. Raphael, so for, for those who aren't familiar with your, your work, uh, mm -hmm. can you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your role with the museum? Yeah, so I am associate curator and I have been working at the Hong Kong Palace Museum um, since uh, November 2019. So I'm responsible mainly for two opening exhibitions, including this exhibition, Clay to Treasure, um, Ceramics from the Palace Museum um, uh, collections, and the other one which I just mentioned, the making of masterpieces, um, Chinese painting and calligraphy from the Palace Museum. Right. And, yeah. That's amazing. So, so this, this you know, colorful set of uh, chrysanthemum-shaped uh, mm. plates, this is what people are going to see when they come into Gallery exactly. 3. Yeah. I mean, there are so many here as mm. well. Uh, just give us an idea of just how big a job it is to put together an, an exhibition of this scale and significance. This is not an easy task. Um, um, so, um, so I'm the lead curator of uh, these exhibitions and the other painting exhibitions and together the two exhibitions uh, display nearly a hundred uh, national treasures of the first grade um, uh, out of the 166 national treasures that are on loan to the uh, Hong Kong Palace Museum. So as a curator I think about the significance of the of the exhibits, his historical show shows and artistic uh, significance and I also um, think about the, the space and the designs and like presenting the exhibits in a uh, historical, historically accurate uh, but also refreshing the modern to the eye of the, uh, of the public and I work very closely with our education teams to um, organize all kinds of um, educational programs to, to our audience. So my job is really to, um, to curate an experience that, if, uh, that is uh, fruitful and um, enjoyable to those who visit our uh, museums. Of course, I'm also responsible for um, um, building the museum's uh, permanent collections. Recently, I facilitate um, the the, uh, the the donations, several donations, um, including the Moon Dishan donations that um, that uh, involve 946 gold and silver objects dating from the third uh, millennium BC and some of the highlights will be uh, on display in another opening exhibitions in gallery six uh, private to public and and I'm also organizing um, uh, an exhibition featuring that donations um, scheduled to open in August next year so wow. a lot of work lots, to do lots of yeah. work to do um, is there any thinking behind putting these colorful plates you know as the you know sort of the starting point of the uh, of the exhibition, yeah, they they they're just visually appealing, yeah. aren't they? Um, so just a little bit backgrounds about this exhibition. So this is the first exhibitions that um, feature the Palace Museum ceramic collections, and it comprises of three sections and displayed uh, 169 objects, including um, uh, a lacquerware and a bronze, um, and of those um, about uh, one third uh, national treasures of the first grade. And mm -hmm. in front of you is 12 dishes that was commissioned by the Yongzheng Emperor of the wow. Qing Dynasty in the 18th century. Um, uh, archival research tells us that only 40 sets of 12 dishes uh, were produced uh, by the imperial kings at Jing De Jin, and mm -hmm. many of the dishes have been lost already. So these 12 dishes here um, are really precious, though they're not in a complete set. I was told by a colleague from the Palace Museum that they were originally black 
vicious as well. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. But I mean, I, I realize, I mean, some, some of these colors look quite modern as well, like th mm. this, this color. Yeah, they, they, they do. Um, these are traditional colors that, that, that was developed before the Qing Dynasty, and some others are new colors like the yellow. That it, 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 it was called the European yellow. It was introduced ah, uh, from Europe. Right, so, so I think we'll see more sort of examples of, um, of China's early sort of interaction, cultural mm. interaction with the West. Mm. But uh, so, so let's uh, move ahead and, and, and check out this uh, this reclining boy, mm. which I believe is one of the highlights of the of the exhibition. Yes, it is, and uh, this is actually this is probably one of the most famous uh, objects in the Palace Museum collections. It was produced by the Ding Kings, uh, one of the five famous kings of the Song Dynasties, and. Um, it is a, ex, an extremely rare example of its kinds, with only one comparable example in the collections of the Palace Museum in Taipei. And the Qianlong Emperor of the Qing Dynasty um, also collected several Dingwe headrests, uh, possibly including this one, for which he composed uh, more than 10 poems. Wow, um, so he must love this, uh, this headrest a lot. He yeah. wrote 10 poems about it. Uh, there are many interesting details. Uh, I believe uh, we were we were just here a few days ago with mm. uh, uh, Deputy Director Daisy Wong, mm -hmm. and she was telling us about how you know the nostrils are kind of mm. you can you could give you can almost give it a COVID test, right? Yeah, could, like, there is a hole it. there. Yeah, yeah, there's a hole it. in there. Yeah. Amazing details. So, but just how rare is this? We, uh, we we only we we have found only one comparable example right. so far. So um, this is extremely well, and it will only on display for three months, and afterward it will be returned to the Palace Museum. Oh wow! Um, only for three months. Yeah. This is one of the star pieces in the in the Tao Su Guan, the, the 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 ceramic galleries. Right, and I believe these, this kind of a, this material was, as you said, was commissioned by the by the emperor himself. So it was kind of uh, made exclusively for the. Mm for the imperial court was no, it, it? Was, it wasn't commissions it was collected by collected. the channel by the channel but, but it was used by nobles uh, the noble class as well and we found examples in gold and other precious materials as well oh wow mm. i have a i have a, a slightly weird question do, do you can, can you really look like he, rest your head on this and because it's quite tough mm. surface <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's quite flat actually. So, uh, but during the Qing Dynasty, it was used for appreciation only. I don't right. think they were used. Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, not utilitarian purpose, more like you mm. know an expression of, of I guess wealth and status and, exactly. and artistic, yes. you know, preference. Interesting. Yeah. So. So here we are in the second sections of the exhibitions. Uh, we have display uh, objects from the Neolithic period. Uh, to the Yuan dynasties in these sections, and in front of you is uh, two of the earliest examples in these uh, exhibitions. This is a quite tripod um, that was used uh, as a cooking vessel by people associated with the Longshan culture, um, um, and dated to uh, dated from the mid of the third millennium BC. So, in other words, this object is um, is uh, about or more than four thousand years old. Wow, this is 4,000 years old, and then mm. people used to cook in this. Mm. Exactly. This is incredible. And this is a white pottery from the Shang Dynasty, uh, and only a small and uh, very few examples were found in the in the tombs of the of the uh, of small groups of high elites. So, also a very precious object, and uh, rarely seen in other exhibitions. So we are very happy to be able to borrow one from the Palace Museum collections and yeah. introduce it to the Hong Kong audiences. Yeah, I was going to ask. I mean, how how amazing it is that you you know I, I can imagine this is kind of a dream job for for mm. most curators in mm. the world. I mean, how does it make you feel to be able to put together a, a, an exhibition like this, uh, working with the Beijing Palace Museum? It was uh, is a f is a very honor. It's a, a huge honor to be able to work with uh, the, the 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 colleagues from the Palace Museum. So, as I said, I joined the museums in uh, November 2019, and um, as a f early career um, curators and. Uh, 
And at the time, the, t the, the team was relatively small, but uh, we, are, uh, we, are, we have grown uh, quite rapidly and we have uh, more than 100 staff uh, now. And I think it is extremely honored to be able to work with a team of like seasoned muse museum professionals as a young, uh, as an early career curators. And I've learned a lot uh, from, from colleagues in the, in the Palace of Museum in Beijing and the passions for their work and knowledge has been a great inspiration. And it's, yeah. Amazing. So uh, I, I realize this one, this one doesn't really, uh, mm -hmm. this one is more kind of dimmed. Mm -hmm. uh, is it because it's more delicate, uh, yeah. more sensible to, yes. sensitive to light? Yes, it is very sensitive to light because uh, these, both the, the box and the, and the figures was origin, were originally painted and the colors, unfortunately, has been oxidized um, after excavation. So, um, so we have tried to dim the light and to uh, to make sure is that uh, they they are preserved in the in the current uh, conditions. I see. So, how long is good, is this one going to be on display for? Uh, uh, more than one year. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Great. So, so most of these are are on display on like a, a rotation basis, right? Some um, of them. Yeah. Some the, of them. Yeah, and like some of the star, star pieces will be returned to the Palace Museum after three or six months and then we'll, they will be replaced uh, with other objects. Um, oh. yeah. um, was Can it I introduce you to this one as well? Um, this is also one of the star pieces in the Palace Museum collection. One of the 166 national <laughs> And this is a, 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 a bottle produced by another very famous kings, uh, the Yue kings of the, uh, during the Tang dynasties and the colors of the glaze is known as mi si, meaning secret color. Secret that, color. Yeah, it, which was not m known to many. And bottle like this one was ins were inspired by glassware from the West Asia and they were found in many important religious sites of the Tang dynasty, including the underground chamber of the Faman Temple in present-day Shanxi province, in which um, the radicals of the Buddha was enshrined. Um, they, they, the bottle like this were probably used as a ritual vessels, and um, so um, this one is very similar and f comparable to the one that was excavated from the Faman Temple. So, another very important piece in the in the collection. How how difficult uh, or how interesting was it to, you know, make the selection from what one point eight six pieces, mm. <laughs> six million, mm. uh, almost two million pieces from the Beijing Palace Museum? What was your thought process? Well, well, that actually there, there are really many to choose from. But um, when I first joined the museum in November two thousand and nineteen, and the understanding was that um, the Hong Kong Palace Museum. Uh, has already been in talks with the Palace Museum in Beijing on the long items, and so um, it, it took a bit of time to 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 um, to as one can appreciate all level to all levels of securities to be clear before um, the and objects can be um, allowed to leave Beijing, right? And so we have, um, as you know, we have nine opening exhibitions and uh, each differently framed and. And for, for the items that are lo on loans to my galleries, and um, so I study them and, and categorize them in the themes, uh, as you can see here, and rotations. And for example, for the painting exhibitions, I put the objects in three rotations while making sure that um, that works, the tank works in each rotation. Uh, equally important, diverse, and, um, and tell a complete stories of the, of, uh, of the early ch histories of uh, Chinese paintings and calligraphy. Mm -hmm. um, what about this one? I, I think you, you wanted to, to tell, tell yeah. us a little bit about this. Yeah, this is also uh, star pieces of this exhibition and also of the whole uh, collections of the Palace Museum. Um, these are rule wares produced uh, uh, in the Northern Song dynasties, and rulers were very precious. They were commissioned by the court of the Northern Song dynasties, and um, they they were highly regarded for the for the colors of the glaze that was likened to the colors of the clearing skies after rain. Yu guo, yu guo tian qin. Um, 
they were already very, uh, they were only in production for 20 years, about 20 years, and were already very precious during the Southern Song Dynasty. And today only about 100 Ruwer survive. And oh, wow. yeah, there are only 20 pieces uh, in the Palace Museum collection. And we are very happy to be able to borrow two pieces um, uh, to be displayed here in this exhibition. And next to the, the the, the plates there is uh, is uh, imitations right. of, from so the, the Ming Dynasty. Yeah. The more bluish one, mm. but it's hard to I imagine you know, cop like you know to copy the, the, the copy reproduce the exact to get the ex <laughs> exactly. Let's see, so 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 these wares were also used by well, I mean not not just the elite, right? Mm. By normal people as well back in the days. Uh, mostly uh, nobles and also oh. uh, the elite class or, or, or the court only sometimes. Oh, these are also highlights, uh, very precious mm. uh, objects. These are from the Longchang kings in present-day Zhejiang province, from the Guan kings or the official kings uh, that was commissioned and that was um, established by the court of the Southern Song Dynasty and also um, was from the Longchang kings whose um, um, uh, locations remain unknown. Oh wow! Even so from these different different styles and colors and techniques, you can learn a lot about uh, the, the the vast territories, the, mm. the different geographic uh, sort of features of, of China, right? Exactly. Uh. If you have to have, you know, your your topic, your favorite, <laughs> your favorite <laughs> set, uh, would you be able to choose? Yeah, we, we, we will see it later. Uh, I really like uh, porcelain uh, bows that imitate a lacquer wear in the Imperial collections. But let me introduce to you yeah. this uh, showcase first before we enter the last section. We are in the third sections and also the last sections of the exhibitions. Um, here we showcase Imperial wares commissions by the Ming and Qing courts. And here we see um, uh, imperial wares produced uh, under the auspices of different uh, emperors of the main dynasties and two major key f uh, features of these imperial wares are the dragon's motif as you can see on these um, objects here and the ring mark um, so um, the, uh, the the dragon motif especially the five crowned dragons were, were served for the emperor right. and a small group of nobles only and the practice of adding ring mark uh, as you can see uh, see on the bottom of this plates here was formally adopted um, during the Shanda period of the early Ming dynasty. Um, so these are the two key features of the of imperial wares of the Ming dynasty. So. I, I think I read that yeah d different uh, dragons with with different uh, do you call them claws? Draw. Claw. Claws. Yeah. Five claws represent the the, the, the emperor. emperor. Yes, the emperor. exactly. And these those two there uh, were inspired by wares from the Middle East. Um, the oh, shapes were uh, imitate. They, their shapes imitate uh, metal wares from the Middle East. And here on the right hand side is a fast that was produced under, uh, during the Yongzheng period of the Qing dynasty that right. in imitations of earlier wares. So in the, so in the 1700s, mm. uh, China was already, I, I imagine, trading with the Middle East and mm. that's how they got the ideas? Mm, yeah, the, well, tr trading was already very frequent at that time. Um, and here we have um, monochromes wares uh, for example, this bottle here is, uh, imitates the shapes of metal wares from Tibet, and these were used for sacrificial purposes. Um, right. So, I wonder. I mean, what does what does this mean to you? You know, personally, like why? What What do you find important about preserving history and telling all these stories to the people of Hong Kong and to the rest of the world? Mm, I think this is very important to to preserve history because but only in doing so that we are reminded of who we are and our connections with our country so i i yeah i think this is very important and for 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 us to learn about our own root and our own culture mm. 
And these are these characters or these from Tibetans. Tib yeah. Oh, Tibetans. Amazing. Do you think Hong Kong people? I mean, this is this this museum isn't open to the public yet. Mm. Um, but how do you think people are going to react when they see see this collection? Or what would you want people to take away from when they see uh, the show? Mm, I hope they they will. Um, <laughs> And I hope this ex exhibition will be an inspiration to them to inspire them to learn more about the Chinese art and Chinese cultures and know more about their own countries and identities. And, and I, I hope they will come back and see the rest of the exhibitions um, because we are going to rotate um, every three months or six. And, oh, wow. uh, yeah. and this is also another style piece from the, from the, from the Palace Museum collection. It was produced um, during the judging period, mm. uh, decorated with um, underglazed copper, which could be easily misfi misfired and turn gray if the temperature is not correct in the kiln. Wow! So it's very difficult to make, and mm. then the uh, and it's called garlic mouth bottle. Mm. The, 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 sh the shapes the of shape it really does look like a yeah. garlic. <laughs> Is this more for ornamental purposes, or? Uh, I think it's, for, it's, it's it was an ornament, so yeah, mm. and yeah, the shapes of the bottle was inspired by bronze, uh, um, bronze vessels of the uh, Warring States period. So, um, right. They were found first in the Qing, the states of Qing. Um, I saw I saw this from uh, from from our last visit, and I was very intrigued by it. The this looks do, this doesn't look very Chinese. Mm -hmm. Is this another example of uh, of our uh, cultural exchange with the West in the early days? Um, I think they they oh, probably this this one was in. I think uh, I, I'm not sure, quite sure, but I think this was Chinese, and uh, I think but they they were new uh, new inventions during the Qing Dynasty, ah. particularly the shapes of this portal here. Yeah. Um, um, uh, so we are entering the the la last subsection, uh, the another subsections of the last sections. Um, in front of us is a varieties of uh, uh, wares that was produced by the imperial uh, imperial kings of the Qing dynasties, and we have fa lang cai, enamel ware, fen cai, and also all kinds of monochromes ware here. And also in these two showcase uh, wares that imitates um, other materials and. Uh, uh, here we have uh, just the positions of a bronze ware, uh, a bronze vessels from the um, Eastern Zhou period, and a chain imitations, um, uh, which uh, the shapes are really similar. And we also have ware uh, porcelains that imitate uh, wooden wood. ware, yeah, wood. Oh, um, wow. So these are, in fact, actually these are all ceramics and material. These, these, uh, these, uh, except this, is, this one. Except this this one, one is is made of bronze. Right. And also we have a pairs of bows here. Actually, they are made of uh, completely different materials, but uh, though they look uh, virtually um, identical. Right. Um, so oh. on this side is a porcelain bow, and on this on the right hand side, this side is is a lacquer like bow. I cannot tell the difference. <laughs> so this one, the the right, the one on the on the. On the, on the, uh, left, the on, left, left on yeah. your screen is porcelain, right? Yes. And the other one is what? Maybe uh, lacquer. Lacquer. Qi qi. Wow. Um, yeah. So um, the, the Chenu Emperor really liked the lacquer bow and he composed a poem which was inscribed uh, uh, on the interiors of the bow. And it was also copied onto the ceramics examples, uh, the ceramics bows as well. Um, where in which the the, the channel emperor likened uh, drinking from this bowl to uh, sipping the nectars of uh, chrysanthemums. Mm. I think we, we, we see this this kind of uh, shape in, in in our restaurants as well. Like when we go to Japanese restaurants or like uh, yeah or, or Chinese restaurants, mm. uh, a lot of these uh, these wares uh, look very familiar. Mm. Yeah, the exchange between China and Japan was quite frequent, so I'm not surprised that, that there were imitations in, in, in Japan as well. I mm. see. And did you say you have a favorite piece here? The, this one is my favorite. Ah, uh, this is the uh, curator's <laughs> pick. <laughs>
the, the color def definitely looks, you know. This one is brighter, brighter, a little bit brighter. On yeah, one. this one is a little bit darker. Oh, I see. I mean, I, I think we uh, we try to to gauge the 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 value of of the exhibition or the the, the pieces on display, and we were told they were just priceless. <laughs> priceless, exactly. Yeah. And. Uh, I think it was uh, Deputy Director Daisy Wong who sort of revealed that there are like a hundred insurance firms that had to work <laughs> together yeah. to yeah. to ensure this uh, the museum. Uh, just to just goes to show how how valuable this is. I mean, yeah, I think said, it's unprecedented in both uh, the histories of Hong Kong and even China to to be um, to to land. Uh, almost a thousand objects just in one time to a single museum. Yeah, and unprecedented, the largest loan the Beijing Palace Museum has ever given, right, to another cultural institution so, outside yeah. of the mainland, ever. Um, and I imagine, you know, just outside the creativity aspect of it, there's also, you know, this logistical challenge, you mm. know, the insurance shipping alone, mm. I mean, to, to, to bring over so many priceless uh, artifacts, I mean, I mean antiques and arts. Yeah, uh, that's why here. we have a special team to, to handle the logistics and, uh, um, and the management of the exhibition. That's, a very, that's not an easy task, yeah. Yeah, and, and I, think, uh, I think Daisy kind of mentioned about the glass as well. They're quite uh, unique, uh, the, the glass around mm. the antiques there. Were they the yeah, same glass mm. that used were used to protect Mona Lisa. Is that what yes, we heard? Yes, they're the same. Uh, these showcases are produced by a, a, a company in Italy, um, and they they are they they are all museum standard showcases. Because um, we th these objects are so precious, we have to do everything to secure guarantee their their safety and. Yeah. And they're so clear that, you know, the first time I, I walked through, yeah, like, I, I, right? I have to check, <laughs> is, this, is there a glass between us? No. Beautiful. And this one is quite pretty too, the, mm. the color. Mm. This one is actually, uh, this one is a chain imitations of a northern stone ware. This is when the northern stone, but also collected by the chain court, uh, which was used in one of the gardens and there is uh, inscriptions at the bottoms of the of the flower pot and um, specifying the locations that it was used the colors are very exquisite mm. the uh, they're mm. not painted on are they they're kind of i mean yeah the, 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 the red color the the or the purple was produced by copper um, um, so it's a metallic mm. sort of element. Um, so, I mean, this this museum itself is is quite uh, an architectural marvel as well. Um, and you know, over the years, we've seen Hong Kong putting a lot of effort into making itself a um, a world class cultural destination. Mm. Um, where do you think Hong Kong, like what makes Hong Kong a world-class cultural destination, do you think? Mm, I think Hong Kong has all the potential to become a, a cultural international hub for arts and cultural exchange. We are historically provided as an international hub f uh, of this kind. Um, um, so, um, uh, as I mentioned in um, what the panels in uh, the other expressions of mine, and Hong Kong was uh, uh, was uh, has contributed to the acquisitions of uh, about sixty masterpieces of Chinese painting and calligraphy in the Palace Museum collection. So we were a place where and um, where, where where a lot of uh, international exchange, cultural exchange was happening, and we are also a place where foreign cultures and talents collide and naturally making us uh, a place with the right conditions um, to develop cultural exchange that is unique to our own histories. But, um, but I think one of the long, long-standing problems is that uh, 
the efforts are scattered and um, and in a busy city like Hong Kong it is very easy um, for us to focus on our own work and miss opportunities to um, to collaborate and so I think this is why the the, the West Kowloon Cultural District is such an important institution um, that uh, to the arts and cultural scenes in Hong Kong, and we are a hub um, converging um, contemporary art, um, visual art, antiques, and per even performing art, and it is a place to be inspired. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. The West Kowloon District, you know, uh, I understood was created to sort of boost Hong Kong's uh, creative uh, industry and, you know, you already have a pretty big, you know, contemporary art gallery and now this this Hong Kong Palace Museum really sort of adds this mm. missing piece, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, an unprecedented, uh, now a permanent institution for people to appreciate and learn about uh, traditional Chinese culture mm. and history. Mm. Um, I, I think I read a few days ago that the, the museum is, is doing a, a youth exchange program. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to inter like invite uh, university students from, from both Beijing and, and Hong Kong to, to, to participate in this two year long um, program where they can you know, learn about Chinese history and art through online and offline uh, sort of uh, workshops and then you know a select number of students will get to you know intern at, mm. at top uh, sort of uh, cultural institutions um, probably get to go on a summer camp and like visit mm. uh, museums on both sides I mean that sounds like a really exciting opportunity for, mm. for young people to learn about uh, uh, art and history right? Yeah, I think so too these kind of opportunities important to both like youngsters in Hong Kong and mainland China and I think it is very important a very important initiative to cultivate um, museum young museum professionals in Hong Kong as well because we are now having more more and more and more museums in Hong Kong we need talents to 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 work uh, in our museum so um, I hope there will be more programs like this in the future so. Yeah, and especially, you know, in, in the uh, digital age, in the age of social media, and, mm. and you know, people have a plethora of, mm. of, of entertainment options. I mean, how, how do we, you know, make museum experience uh, more attractive to young people, do you think? Yeah, I think it's very important to make uh, a museum more interactive to its audiences. And I think, as you can see here, we, we have used a lot of new medias and new technologies to enhance uh, interactivities and interest in our viewers and and also uh, potentially to uh, attract um, uh, new audience groups as well um, so I think the cross collaborations between art and tech um, is really um, something that museums are very keen to keen to explore nowadays and I personally find it very uh, inspiring to 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 work with um, players from across the industries to to actually the, uh, the exhibitions that you see today right so so this one is an example of the interactive experience you were just talking about yeah this so you, is, you can actually design your own um imperial wear yeah this is <laughs> this uh, this interactive is was inspired by um, line drawings that was used uh, that was um, designed by the chain core to be sent to the Jingle oh, yeah. chain. To so make these are real yeah. drawings. Yeah, we extracted did from exactly. history, yeah. basically. So um, yeah, uh, to make sure that the the request the, the requirements of the course were followed. So. Um, official designs were drawn up and sent to Jingdezhen, the Imperial Kingdom at Jingdezhen, so um, people can play around with the uh, with the motif that we right. extract from the There's even characters, characters to choose yeah. from. Yeah. This is so cool. So so you can drag, <laughs> drag and drop and design yeah. your own um, own wear. Um, you can even add your initial um, to the for example, oh. just, uh, one, for example, I just randomly pick one and then confirm and then I put it here and then you can s get the QR code and scan and save it to your mobile device. That's amazing. So, yeah. so scan it and then share it on yeah. social media, right? Yeah. That's a great way to sort of promote, promote the museum and, and promote uh, Chinese history. Mm. Um, and there are so many, th so, so these are the same, right? Yeah, you can, they're so all the same, yeah. Wow. 
This is so, and this is basically the end point of, of this exhibition, right? Yes, this glass yes. gallery, and you have another gal, another exhibition. Mm. Um, wow! Thank you so much for uh, for giving us this ex exclusive <laughs> tour to uh, one of your opening exhibitions. Um, I hope you've learned just as much as I have and enjoyed it. Uh, just as much as I have. Um, the museum is opening to the public on July 2nd. Uh, the price uh, for a uh, standard ticket is $50, $50, right? $50, 50 Hong Kong dollars. Very good price, right? For, <laughs> yeah. for nine galleries. For seven for galleries. Seven, seven galleries. And I think uh, admission is free for, uh, for Wednesdays, right? Wednesday, yeah. Uh, during the first year? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Wow. For now, that's the plan, I think. Basically, yeah, a very, very valuable experience. Uh, uh, going to, to, to nine galleries and see 5,000 years of history. Uh, I hope you check it out. And thank you for tuning into our uh, live stream. And we'll see you next time on our uh, another live stream uh, tomorrow. Bye.